Hi, it's The Wire. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. In my favorites folder right now is a great video. It's a bunch of guys sitting around a table talking about this Terrence Crawford Madrimov fight. That's coming up, right? Among the fighters around the table, you have one of the heavyweight division's best athletes, Joseph Parker. You also have Darren Barker. You also have trainer Ben Davison, key presence. You also have Chris Mannix. Now, they're talking about Terrence Crawford, and let me readily say here, and I say it without hesitation, uh, Crawford, to me, is the best in the sport pound for pound, right? I don't feel that NOA has Crawford's defense, right? I think Crawford has dominated to the point where he hasn't been forced to go the distance in several years. And that's as he's fighting people like Sean Porter, Errol Spence, right? And then the uh, panel, and again, this video is in my favorites folder, started talking about what would happen at 147 pounds if Terrence Crawford fought Floyd Mayweather, right? And then incredibly, as I see it, the panel picked Crawford, right? I'd pick Mayweather. Let me just make a point here. Um, I think athleticism matters. I think freak athletes have their problems. They often don't fully learn the sport, right? Their athleticism is such that they don't have to learn fundamentals. Right? You have a guy right now in the Paris Olympic Games who is one of the best sprinters I have ever seen in my life. Noah Lyles. Please pay attention to him. He's a freak athlete. Right? But you'll notice Noah Lyles doesn't get out the blocks that well. Right? Lyles is a guy who literally relies on his talent to beat you in races. Other guys will be ahead of him at 50 meters, then Lyles is really relying on his higher top-end speed to blow by you. Right now, just to understand, that's the way many freak athletes are. Roy Jones, when he was first starting out, was a freak athlete. Right? He beat guys who, quite frankly, were better boxers than him. Mike McCallum, James Toney, because Jones could just do it all, right? He was like Superman as a boxer. He didn't really have the attention to detail that someone like Mike McCallum had. But Jones had youth. He had his freak athleticism. And he was able to dominate. But then you notice... As freak athletes lose some of their athleticism, they return to being ordinary guys, right? So Bernard Hopkins, who Jones beat when Jones was at the height of his freak athleticism, outclassed him when they met in the rematch because Hopkins, who was not a freak athlete, knew the sport of boxing and knew the fundamentals and Jones really didn't know that part of boxing as well as Hopkins did. Well, let's talk about that rare freak athlete. Jordan, Kobe, Eric Dickerson, right? That rare freak athlete who actually has the fundamentals down, right? Is great defensively decides he's going to learn things he doesn't know. So, of course, Jordan was viewed as a guy who couldn't hit three-pointers. 
You get to the NBA Finals. He's playing against the Portland Trailblazers. Jordan hit so many threes in the first half that he shrugs his shoulders at one point. Right? That's what we're talking about. Wilt Chamberlain. That's what we're talking about. Right? Joel Embiid might get numbers and stuff like that. He's not Wilt. Right? The freak athlete who figures out the game. Kobe. Right? Eric Dickerson, unlike Barry Sanders, could run between the tackles. He could read blocks. I'm just telling you, the NFL is lucky that he leaves the Rams after the first few years because he would have rewritten the record book in a way that would have been untouchable, as it is. He still has the record for the most yards in a season. Right? I believe... One year he had over 1,800 yards. The next year he has 2,105 yards. He leaves the Rams shortly thereafter. Now let me say this about Mayweather. Crawford certainly is the better knockout puncher. Right? Crawford's a closer. But Crawford wouldn't be able to deal with Mayweather's athleticism. I'm not here saying Mayweather's unbeatable. I myself would bet on Thomas the Hitman Hearns at 147 over Mayweather, right? But you need to understand, Mayweather is that rare Noah Lyles freak athlete. You know, one of the great fights to watch, and it's a beautiful fight. Just look at the foot speed gap, right? It's Mayweather against one Manuel Marquez. Right, Marquez in every fight against Manny Pacquiao, another freak athlete, Marquez befuddled Pacquiao, even when Marquez is losing, right? The first fight, Pacquiao comes out and poses himself on Marquez, knocks Marquez down, something like three times, right? After that, you get a series of fights where Marquez is befuddling Manny Pacquiao. You know, Marquez can't befuddle Mayweather. Folks, that's a dominant Mayweather fight. It's at 147. That's a dominant Mayweather fight. Mayweather is just too good an athlete. All these great counters by Marquez. Understand, Marquez is a counterpuncher's counterpuncher. Right? Mayweather wasn't there for them. Mayweather's left hook is so sudden, Mayweather could... You know, throw that left from outside. Mayweather could move around the ring to such a degree that while I'll concede, Crawford might be able to land big shots like Shane Mosley did when he fought Mayweather. Right? While I concede that, understand what happened in that Mosley fight. Mayweather then makes the adjustment and is just too athletic for Shane Mosley. Right? Just like with Jordan, the athletic gap would rule the day. Mayweather fights Canelo. Right? I believe that fight's up around 150, isn't it? Or something like that. Folks, while I feel Crawford has a real shot against Canelo, Crawford won't be able to fight Canelo the way Mayweather did. Right? Recognize a freak athlete. Right? Just like you know, Roy Jones was able to make James Tony look like his feet were in cement, right? Just understand that James Tony would go on to knock out Evander Holyfield, right? It's only Roy Jones that could make Tony look that way, not Holyfield, not not other guys. Right? You know, Jones at the height of his power. Understand how Jones lost his first fight. He knocks Montel Griffin down. Then he knocks Montel while he's on the canvas. That's the only way Jones loses that fight. Montel was frustrating Roy. Because, of course, Montel was more of a technician than Roy. Roy was a guy with fast hands, a great left hook. Um, ridiculous reflexes, the kind of hand speed where he could faint you into submission, right? But Montel Griffin was a more complete fighter. Didn't matter. 
right? The only way Jones lost was he knocks Montel down in a tough fight and then hits Montel while he's on the canvas. So understand, Mayweather, and I know the guys on the show disagree with me, right? Um, ben Davison is the one guy on that show who is firm on Mayweather, right? But Mayweather's too good of an athlete in his prime for Terrence Crawford, right? Don't get me wrong. Crawford is a master strategist. So too was Mayweather. Mayweather's defense is better than really almost anyone I've seen. Not named Pernell Whitaker. You know what I mean? Mayweather, elite defense, he'd have the defensive advantage on Terrence Crawford. Mayweather's left hook is as good as any punch Crawford has, right? While Crawford has some hand speed, it's not Mayweather hand speed, right? You know, what we need to do is we need to look at freak athletes and we need to start to respect them. Understand, Bo Jackson really was trying to figure out baseball, right? But we all understood at the time that Bo, who, by the way, also played football and averaged for his career, look this up, more than five yards a carry. That's what freak athletes are about, right? Bo Jackson in baseball, we understood when he was hot, other guys couldn't match his game. Right, Jackson in the outfield, look, I'm not going to confuse him with Gary Maddox, right? You know, a technician guy who, you know, covered the whole outfield, it seemed. But Bo Jackson could run down balls that guys who didn't have 4-2 speed and a 40 could not, right? Floyd Mayweather, the secret to Mayweather is that Mayweather was a freak athlete who, like Jordan, that's really the comparison, mastered the sport, right? I think Mayweather would just be too much for Crawford, just like he was too much for one Manuel Marquez. I think Crawford would do better than Marquez did, right? But you got to be kidding me. Crawford's been winning fights by knockout. Do you really think he'd be able to get a knockout against really the best defensive fighter he would have faced in his career? I don't. Let me say this too. While I give Crawford a good chance to beat Canelo, right? I really do. Just understand, here's Canelo against Mayweather, right? Mayweather, you know, understands fighting out of weight, right? Mayweather fought out of weight to fight Oscar De La Hoya. He's fighting out of weight to fight Canelo. And understand, Mayweather is so fast that Mayweather in the first round comes out and is throwing jabs to Canelo's body. What Billy Joe Saunders later tried, years later, that got Billy Joe Saunders a fractured eye socket. And Canelo is a step slow. First, folks, that's the first round. Canelo's a step slow. It's clear that Mayweather's speed is just on a different level. You know, freak athletes don't have to play chess with you. That's why they're freak athletes. When you meet the freak athlete who is like an Eric Dickerson, right, can read blocks, can run anywhere, right, not just outside, doesn't need his team in a run and shoot. Everyone in the arena could know he's going to get the football. His quarterback doesn't have to be Scott Mitchell or someone like that the quarterback, or even Joe Ferguson, Bills fans, right? The quarterback can be Dieter Brock. And still, you can't stop the guy, right? The guy is just too blessed. You know, he can literally scan the field and know there's a hole over here in the line, hit the line, and be gone. That's who Dickerson was. He ends up with back problems. He loses his freak athleticism. But understand, when... The freak athlete is a technician. He has an edge on ordinary mortals. So let me say this. I was in a bar. I'll even name the bar. Applebee's in uh, West San Jose, California. Right Years ago, I was in a bar. 
right? I must have looked like an old guy back then, too. So I'm hanging out, minding my business, some young guys and the bartender. You know, seek me out. Want my opinion. Who is better? LeBron James, who they were telling me was bigger, stronger, faster. Or Michael Jordan. Right, folks? I, <laughs> I will not ask you to look up Jordan's points per game. Right? All I will say is, and LeBron, of course, this was more prime LeBron. Right? LeBron's a great player. He's one of the best I've ever seen. Right? But he's a Magic Johnson type player. LeBron and Johnson aren't the level of freak athlete that I'm talking about. Right? What I want people to do is to look up LeBron's all defensive teams. Right, folks, it, it's not close. It's not close. We don't have to get into more championships and fewer games. Right? We you know we don't have to get into more MVPs and fewer games. Right? Understand with Michael there were times where even against great players you understood he was the best player on the court athletically right you know Jordan uh, wins the scoring title the same year he wins defensive player of the year right now a LeBron like a Hank Aaron who hit more home runs than freak athlete Willie Mays Right? A LeBron could get numbers over time, collect numbers that exceed Jordan's numbers, just like Hank Aaron did. But then, of course, you look more closely at the record, and just like you realize Mays, 660 or so home runs, led the league in stolen bases multiple years. Think about that. Right? That's when you realize this isn't close you know one guy you know Mays is stealing bases my favorite Mays interview was when they talked to him about Jose Canseco going 40-40 and Willie flatly said that if he knew that was a thing he would have done 40-40 right think about that that's the freak athlete mindset right Jordan you know as great as LeBron is Jordan's a different level Right, LeBron is probably the better passer. LeBron made it to 10 finals. Right, think about that. Right, LeBron's in that rare Bill Russell neighborhood. Right, LeBron score. LeBron certainly did some things better than Jordan. Right, LeBron might be bigger and stronger. Please don't tell me ever that he's faster. We know that's not true. Let's just say Roy Jones, let's just say Floyd Mayweather are faster than Terrence Crawford. You add in Mayweather's skill level. Mayweather and Jones are different, right? Jones wasn't the technician Floyd was. You add in Mayweather's level of defense and if we all get to heaven and I'm sitting there and I get an opportunity to bet on a prime Crawford at 147 against prime Floyd at 147, folks, I'll be taking Floyd. That level of athleticism with that level of defense and that left hook? And you think I'm going to take anyone else? Other than Thomas the Hitman Hearns, <laughs> maybe... Ray Leonard, right? Another guy who, by the way, in his prime, freak athlete. But of course, freak athletes don't learn the sport as well in general as, let's say, the Bernard Hopkinses of the world, right? So Leonard had some holes in his game. You started to see that, by the way, later when he fought Hearns the second time. Let's remember that fight. When he fights Donnie Lalonde, let's remember... Ray gets dropped in that fight, gets off the canvas, gets the win, uh, in part because he's a freak athlete, but not as freakish as he was as a young man. Then, of course, the coup de gras, uh, the Abel Sanchez fight, 
terrible Terry Norris against Ray Leonard, right? Freak athletes eventually lose the edge that comes from being a freak athlete. But when you're a Jordan, when you're a Floyd, when you're a Wilt, right? You have enough to compensate, right? So please, let's not confuse Mayweather at the very end of his career when he's fighting Andre Berto with Mayweather at his peak powers when he's ruling the roost at 147. Right? Just to understand, Crawford, as good as he is, would not be able to match Floyd athletically. And that's the difference, in my opinion. Right? Ben Davison has a similar viewpoint. Right? Food for thought. Around the table, by the way, uh, they asked people like Joseph Parker. They said, who's the best pound for pound in the sport? And um, the consensus in the room seemed to be Usyk. Let me take exception to that. Right? Crawford throws more punches than Usyk. Usyk is living off of a straight left hand. Right? Don't get me wrong. Usyk's a great fighter. Usyk clearly is first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, it's a tribute to Usyk that two guys fighting for the heavyweight title, Joshua and Dubois, uh, both lost to him, right? Dubois got stopped, let's let's be blunt, by Usyk, who is in his second weight class. I'm not saying Usyk is anything other than a great fighter, right? Longtime subscribers know here that I was talking about Usyk um, coming into heavyweight before he got to the division and having a chance to win the title, right? I know who Usyk is, right? Usyk, who was getting roughed up by Derek Chisora, let's be blunt, who had tough moments in his fight against Michael Hunter, right? Just understand, Usyk doesn't have the diversified offense of Terrence Crawford, right? I think a lot of Usyk, both guys are southpaws, but I think a lot of Usyk's game comes from the fact that he's a southpaw, right? Comes from the fact that, let's be blunt here, the heavyweight division, he's caught some guys at the right time, hasn't he? Right? Post Andy Ruiz, AJ. Right? Francis Ngannou knocks down Tyson Fury earlier in a fight, then Usyk knocks down Tyson Fury. Right? Daniel Dubois already lost to Joe Joyce. Usyk shows up. Usyk already knows that Dubois is a guy who can get discouraged. Let's be real here. There's a mental part of boxing and who gets hit with jabs, right? Let's just be real here, right? You knew that looking at the Joe Joyce fight. Um, it's not like Usyk is catching guys when they're at their peak, right? Terrence Crawford... I'll just say, um, and I'll agree, there's a camp out there that'll say Errol Spence, the Errol Spence he fought, wasn't Spence before the car crash, right? Let me just say, though, that Spence who fought Ugas, ooh, he looked good, didn't he? He looked good, right? I think Terrence Crawford um, just has a more diversified offensive game and can't be bullied over to the ropes like Usyk can be, right? I would pick Crawford as the best in the sport pound for pound, and that said, he's not prime Floyd Mayweather at 147 pounds. On the show, Chris Mannix says, and I believe correctly, that Mayweather cleans out Crawford at 135, right? I would argue that you can just end that sentence by saying Mayweather cleans out Terrence Crawford. 135, 140, 147. Let's remember, <laughs> you know, Crawford's about to fight at 154. Floyd, been there, done that. Beat Hall of Famer Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> uh, beat future Hall of Famer. We know it's just a matter of him retiring, then being eligible. Canelo, right? That's 
That's up over 147, folks. Right? Freak athletes, let's not sell them short. I don't believe. Kobe was the player Jordan was. Right? But let's just say Kobe, better athlete than LeBron. Can we agree on that? Right? If you don't factor in athleticism, you're missing a lot. Ali. Let's talk about the best Ali. In the 1960s, Ali as a young man is a freak athlete. Right? Look at his fight against Sonny Liston. Fights against Sonny Liston. Ali is too damn fast. Now don't get me wrong. Ali has holes in his game. Right? Dropped by Sonny Banks. Dropped by Henry Cooper. Right? Ali, like Madrimov, we're going to find out, would drop his hands a bit too much. Right? Was not defensively blessed. We all understand that. But he's a freak athlete. He and Cleveland Williams are in two different sports. Right? Cleveland Williams, big puncher. It's clear Ali can wait for Williams to decide to throw a punch. And as Williams is throwing the punch, Ali can get off combinations. Right? Floyd was a freak athlete who was also a master technician and great defensive fighter. In my opinion, he beats Crawford at 147, and I think Crawford today, not Usyk, Crawford, is the best in the sport, pound for pound. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I know there are different camps out there. I know there's an NOA camp. Fair enough. I understand there certainly is an Usyk camp. Fair enough. I know there's a camp involving Dimitri Bevel that recognizes that Bevel was the superior athlete to Canelo. I know there's a Canelo camp too. There is on the show. Right? Um, I know there are different camps. Tell us about the camp you're in in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.